I love your mug, by the way. <laughs> oh, thank Lovely. you so much. Can you read what it says? Yeah, yeah, just my cup of tea. That's so cute. <laughs> I have to get it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. My work mug is rubbish. And then my ones at home are like so nice and big. <laughs> well, I made the mistake of taking one of my really nice ones with like a little A on the front into that. <laughs> and when I see someone else using it, I'm like, excuse me. <laughs> That is mine. That is so sneaky. I wouldn't I have the balls to do that. I proper scrub it. I'm like, especially at the moment, I'm mm. like, oh my goodness, clean. Yeah. she. Anyway, hello. Hey. Um, <laughs> nice to see you. Thank you for taking time out of your day to do this. Yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> How are you? Yeah, really good, thank you. How about you? Yeah, good, thanks. Um, I still feel quite perky this evening. I don't know why. I might be like the cookie that I've eaten or something but <laughs> oh my gosh I'm jealous <laughs> <laughs> I know so good cool so um yeah do you want to just give a little bit of an intro on like which specialism you're on and like what you've kind of come from if that's okay <laughs> yeah sure um so my name's Amy uh, I'm a first year SDP student doing Eurodynamics um and my department also does GI physiology as well so I get to dabble mm -hmm. a bit um but mainly uh, the university side is the aerodynamics. Um, before this, I did an integrated master's in biomedical science um, from Sussex University. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, that's, <laughs> that's me. <laughs> did you have much um, experience then in your aerodynamics before you started? Because it sounds very, very niche. <laughs> yeah, it's incredibly niche. Um, I actually didn't have any experience. Uh, I didn't know what Eurodynamics was um, when I was applying. I just kind of, I knew I was interested in urology. Um, so I did a lot of research um, kind of into that. Um, I'm sorry if you can get background noise. I think someone's setting off fireworks. Um, so right. <laughs> it kind um, of sounded like a bomb day drum. I was like, yeah. <laughs> little vibe um so I kind of had a few modules on general human physiology and you know anatomy things like that and, you know it kind of very briefly covered stuff like the kidneys and didn't really go into kind of like the lower urinary tract in terms of like mm -hmm. the blood um and so in terms of actual eugenomics experience absolutely none <laughs> um, but I kind of used other like personal experience and any working with people that I could when applying for the job. Um, so I'm actually quite fine to share that I had a personal experience um, mm -hmm. with having, like a urological problem. Um, and my GP was very adamant that it wasn't a problem and that it was fine and that I didn't have an issue. Um, so it took me four years to see a specialist uh, and someone who works you know, in neurodynamics to actually diagnose me with the problem. And as soon as I got to them, they were like the nicest people and they understood they were so kind and so caring. And it was after I saw them, that was about two years ago, um, that I was like, wow, I could really like have such an impact in someone's life because yeah. I felt like no one understood what I was going through. And finally getting to speak to someone that understood it, I was like, mm -hmm. I've had this personal experience. Now I can take that and like directly yeah. help other people. Um, so that's kind of my main influence <laughs> with going through Eurodynamics. Yeah. it's so nice to be able to like put yourself in the shoes of the people that you're trying to help like I think it adds another dimension onto you as like a professional yeah completely especially because your dynamics is obviously very invasive you know you're putting mm -hmm. catheters into kind of <laughs> very intimate areas you know? <laughs> and especially if it's the patient's first time having anything mm -hmm. like that um they're going to be really nervous mm -hmm. um, and that's completely understandable so knowing you know I've been there mm -hmm. I know what they're feeling like and yeah. I just make sure to be you know extra kind and caring because <laughs> that's what I would want <laughs> yeah yeah especially I guess if you've been passed from pillar to post for so many years and just like not taken seriously and not believed like by the time you actually get to people that are actually going to help you you probably are almost thinking like maybe I am making up <laughs> maybe yeah. this isn't like a thing it's like really damaging um especially mm -hmm. to like mental health as well um so we really mm -hmm. make sure like our patients are seen you know as soon as possible and by you know you know the actual experts yeah. in their field and knowing cause it's so niche not many people know your genomics is a thing at all um so I think it's quite a big relief 
the mm. patient comes in, we can do the tests and we can give them an answer on that day, essentially. As on the, the day. Kind of what the ne- yeah, except, like what the next steps are and kind of how we can help them. Um, so it's very rewarding. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it sounds that it must make such a big um, like difference to their lives as well because it's not really something you can avoid. <laughs> like yeah. going for a wee. <laughs> You're gonna yeah. need <laughs> there's so many different problems as well that you kind of you probably wouldn't even really think of the problems unless you know someone or yourself mm-hmm. have had an experience of having an issue with that um and if you think about it because you know so you go to the loo like you don't know eight times a day or whatever you don't think about that eight times a day and imagine being in like so much pain mm-hmm. and that being such an issue for you it yeah it has a huge impact on them especially mental health as I mentioned as well yeah. um so yeah, I'm just happy to help make a difference for them. That's so sweet. That's so good that there are like people <laughs> like you there, like ready to help. <laughs> cool. So from an absolute non-expert, I didn't even know what it was before I saw it written down um, on the website. <laughs> yeah. What do you, people get referred to you for? Okay. Um, so it's a range of um, issues and problems. Um so essentially what we do in neurodynamics, explain that first and kind of yeah. talk about it. Um, so neurodynamics is essentially looking at the function of the bladder. Mm-hmm. Um, so that involves pitting catheters uh, into the bladder um, and into the rectum to measure abdominal pressure um, and subtracting those to calculate the bladder pressure because you can't absolutely measure the bladder pressure, okay. um, which is uh, the detrusor muscle. So you subtract um, the vesicle, uh, the bladder pressure uh, from the abdominal to work out kind of what um that muscle is doing so we kind of look at changes in uh when you know if we artificially fill a patient um what the bladder does when it's being filled um because some patients will have uh filling problems some people have voiding problems uh it completely varies um so that's kind of essentially what we're looking at kind of what the bladder is doing when you're filling it up uh, and when you're emptying Mm -hmm. so we'll see patients uh for stress incontinence so um if maybe perhaps a woman has had uh given birth um there might be some issues with the pelvic floor muscles yeah. um because obviously that you know carrying a baby and then delivering <laughs> a baby puts huge stress <laughs> on the muscles down there um so you know it potentially if you're running or just generally mm-hmm. doing like housework um you can get a woman that kind of leaks um and then there's kind of also anyone with like frequency urgency problems um if your bladder's overactive so if your muscle uh your bladder muscle is potentially like twitching um mm-hmm. and being overactive when it should just be storing um all the urine that you're producing rather than signaling to your brain i've got to go i've got to go <laughs> when in reality you were <laughs> 10 minutes ago um, <laughs> and we also see um patients with neurological uh linkage problems um mm-hmm. i don't have a huge knowledge of that yet because I'm still very new obviously um but that's something I'm keen to get more involved in um we also see um men with prostate problems because okay. uh, the way uh, the prostate kind of sits and the urethra kind of runs through um so if you get any problems um with like enlargements of the prostate and like cancer anything like that um we're kind of a good uh, like good people to come to to kind of see how um that is affecting the output because mm-hmm. um, obviously you get more resistance and then it's more yeah. difficult for the patient. Um, we also see patients for um, Botox. Um, so that's run by one of the nurses. Um, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> not somewhere I'd have thought you'd get Botox, I'm not going to lie, but <laughs> you learn something new. <laughs> yeah, I know. When, when they were like, oh, do you want much Botox? I was like, I didn't realise that <laughs> that was a thing at all. <laughs> So one of the specialist urology nurses runs the Botox clinic. Um, the kind of patients that have tried, you know, we obviously go to um, lifestyle changes is the first thing we try and help with um, if the bladder's overactive. So, you know, switch into decaf um, mm-hmm. beverages, drinking, you know, the right amount of water and cutting out certain food groups. Um, if that doesn't work, you go into, there's like a few lines of medication you work through um, and kind of, if that's not helping, the next step is Botox. Um, so it's injections directly into the bladder lining um, to kind of help de-stimulate that bladder. So you're not getting all those signals all the time. 
Um, so that was incredibly interesting. When I first saw that, it was absolutely amazing. Um, and we also sometimes get people coming in for sacral nerve modulation, um, which is something my uh, manager of the department kind of runs. And that's for, um, it kind of can help with re-stimulating the bladder. Okay. Kind of does a lot of things. It's very um, kind of not well explored at the moment. Um, but we've had patients come in and it's made such a huge difference. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I got to go into the theatre and actually watch one, watch an implant being like placed um, in a patient, which was an amazing experience. Um, and maybe really want to like look into that for the future as well. Yeah. So yeah, we see a lot um, yeah. of range of uh, people coming in and obviously also doing the GI side of it as well. Mm -hmm. You also get a huge range of patients there. So it's, yeah very different day to day yeah there's so much more than I would have thought if you asked me to like write down beforehand what who might be referred to you there's so many more people than I would have thought yeah I think if you had to generally class it um especially at the moment so many in first uh, like the first kind of segment of the placement mm -hmm. um I mainly see females with either stress incontinence or overactivity mm -hmm. um but yeah as I said, there's an absolute huge yeah. range. It's interesting that there's like a spectrum as well. So it's like people that can't not wee and then people that maybe can't wee easily. <laughs> yeah, it's it's completely, yeah. Mm. I was amazed when I first joined because obviously, you know, I had to do a lot of research to get onto this programme. I kind of, you know, I was classifying what kind of you know incontinence you can have. And then you, you actually get into the department and you're like, whoa, like it's mm. so much more than I thought it would be in yeah. the best way of course <laughs> yeah that's so good so um with your research did you was that enough to help you get on like first time round obviously your master's as well yeah um so uh the only research I did in terms of like my master's was very uh genetics based I did like genetic <laughs> manipulation um <laughs> which was absolutely amazing and so I thought well I really don't have much relevant experience for this but you know I'll give it a shot anyway yeah um I did a lot I was I kind of finished my dissertation uh mid through May and then my interview for this was the beginning of June so those two weeks were solidly mm -hmm. only looking at your dynamics <laughs> reading around and kind of looking at the curriculum working out kind of what might they ask me because you know it was with like two people from the department yeah so I was like well I can really tailor this to what I'm actually mm -hmm. doing rather than I was really worried about potentially having to go to the um mm -hmm. interviewing <laughs> day I was like well, I'm very glad like I just got to stay at home and see a couple people but <laughs> yeah no I was the same I was yeah I think one really good thing about doing it with two people from the trust is that you can really kind of look at what they do as a department and what they like particularly are interested in and do some research on that yeah because um, I'm based at Bristol and like our aerodynamics department is like really like highly regarded um which I didn't actually know um when I applied um when I found out when I got there from the SDP that just qualified um because we take they take in on a three-year basis and then Okay. the person that just finished gets the next training to look after it and she was like oh did you know you know it's really well respected and I was like I had no like <laughs> I really didn't have I didn't know why I'm doing it yeah <laughs> I was like um, how do I do this how yeah <laughs> but they're so friendly and um I interviewed with um uh kind of the head of the department um who's a clinical scientist who had been there I think she did the program one of the first or second intake maybe mm -hmm. um, and then I had the clinical engineer who comes in the department quite a lot um, and he's absolutely lovely <laughs> so <laughs> I was I got off I finished the interview I remember being like there's such lovely people yeah like if I don't get in I'm happy to reapply but thankfully I did <laughs> so, yeah yeah definitely everyone I think you feel like you found where you fit in once you get onto the program like everyone's who you kind of expect them to be like if that makes sense yeah <laughs> um cool I literally just had something in my head and now I've forgotten what was it gonna be oh do you have any other so you're the only trainee 
in neurodynamics are there any other trainees with you like in the trust or is it just you um so I know there's a few others in the trust um so there was uh one of the girls from respiratory came and did a couple of days with us mm-hmm. and I do my respiratory rotation on Monday oh. um however there's not like I've not met anyone and it's so difficult at the moment because of covid um yeah getting to meet people that are in the trust um though I have kind of looked around I've not found too many people um mm. but I work quite closely with a second year um GI student who comes uh, twice a week to our departments to do the Eurodynamics and she's mm. um from the B- uh, BRI Bristol Royal Infirmary um and she's absolutely lovely so having someone like that one year above you for a couple of days a week is so so lovely and so supportive <laughs> it's just a shame I kind of haven't found more people actually in my hospital yet hopefully once we're able to do things and get out (laughs) yeah I hope so it'd be so lovely to meet some more people because I feel very isolated at the moment Mm. yeah it's nice that your training officer I suppose it's like an old STP then because she can understand like what kind of pressures you've got at the moment and then additional COVID pressures as well yeah it's really lovely um because there's so there's three um trainees above me essentially um you know in terms of every three years and then the rest of our departments made up with you know nurses and um technical um how would you say it they specialize in like they know the technology of everything we're doing and clinical engineers um and we work very hands-on with the doctors I was very surprised we have a really good relationship with all the doctors that come to work in our department which is lovely I wasn't expecting it to be so very team based and very yeah. everyone gets on it's absolutely it's absolutely lovely that's so nice so yeah I was gonna ask actually that's what I was gonna ask um you mentioned going into a surgery yeah. so is your role like particularly like patient based are you in surgeries a lot or um so I'm kind of I'm completely patient based mm-hmm. um you know yeah. I'll see patients every day um and write up, write up their reports and that kind of is my day um I'm very lucky in terms of uh, my training officer she wants she will let me do whatever I want so she one day she was like hey I'm going up to do the uh, sacral neuromodulation do you and one of the nurses I work with um want to come with so I spent a whole day watching you know um three or four patients kind of get their implant fitted mm-hmm. and really seeing what it's like because I've seen temporary ones fitted which we do in our department but seeing everything actually being fitted in a surgery is completely different and I'm hoping in the future I'll get to go into more of the GI surgeries as well mm-hmm. um, and potentially some uh, operations involved that result from urodynamics because I think it's really nice to be able to see that patient pathway yeah um, and see what's happening so it's really nice because it's so patient-based you can literally step mm-hmm. by step <laughs> you know see the patient for their very first appointment and hopefully see them at the end of it with their problems fixed yeah um yeah (laughs) (laughs) that sounds so good it sounds so nice just to be able to build up that relationship with someone and yeah find a cure for their problem or do the cure for their problem (laughs) the best we can yeah absolutely I absolutely love it (laughs) (laughs) so how does GI like physiology fit into urodynamics then okay um so we do a few, there's a lot going on with GI as well. We kind of do the basics. Um, so we do stuff like hydrogen breath tests, the tests for bacterial overgrowth and intolerances to like, you know, lactose, fructose, things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and we also do esophageal manometry, so which is looking at the pressures and kind of you put the tube like down the nose, back of the throat, and it kind of measures the pressures here. And you can look at acid reflux, uh, everything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then kind of at the other end, um, everything is very linked down there um, in terms of you've got the pelvic floor, which supports, you know, everything, <laughs> essentially. Uh, and all the nerves are very closely related. Um, so in terms of like today, um, I was in with some anorectal manometries, which is essentially um, the patient comes in, um, history, everything like that, getting to know them. Um, you do the rectal examination and then you pop a little tube in. Mm-hmm. Um, and that tube is looking at the pressures um, and we get the patients to do certain manoeuvres to kind of test first of all like the pelvic floor and kind of how it is you know what their problems is when you know they're trying to go to the toilet um, 
So that is quite, le quite linked to urodynamics because you'll often see a patient um, for things like a uh, anorectal monomentary um, and we do ask, we're like, oh, do you have any urinary problems as well? And more often than not, um, the case will be, yeah, they do. Um, so we get to see quite a lot of people for kind of those two tests. They overlap quite a lot. Just generally, you know, if you have a weak pelvic floor, it's going to be weak in general. Um, yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> Can fit, fix two problems in one. <laughs> well, yeah, we try. <laughs> So do you do GI physiology at uni as well then? Um, so I think I do up until the final year. So the final year is just urodynamics. Um, but for now, yeah, I'm, all the uni work is GI. And then I also have to do the respiratory module this year oh, yeah. as well. Um, so yeah, it's good. It's a good range. Um, mm -hmm. And I had no idea that I'd be doing GI when I applied for the job. I was under the impression it was just urodynamics. Um, so yeah, complete another level of things to learn. Um, it's very full on, but it means, you know, I don't have to do an extra rotation this year because mm -hmm. um, we do all of the competency stuff in our department. Um, so that's quite helpful, um, especially at the moment. It's very difficult to find somewhere to go. So, yeah, I'm quite grateful for that. How are you finding the workload? It sounds like you're very full on with patients. So how are you finding managing to balance everything? Um, at the moment, it's OK, um, because I typically um because I'm quite new I can do things like taking the histories and stuff for some of the tests and then I can actually do some of the tests the basic ones like a hydrogen breath test um because that's not invasive at all um so those are the only reports I'm going to be writing up for the week um so mm -hmm. maximum I'll be doing like two reports a week and then everything else I'm chaperoning or doing the technology side of it um so I might sit like with the colleague who does all the data interpretation from the Eurodynamics. Uh, and make sure you know I'm understanding we're yeah. both getting the same numbers um and like seeing if I can see what the problem is and everything um so in terms of that it's not too bad uh, in terms of uni um I'm at Newcastle so all the deadlines are on April 12th uh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm currently trying to work through those and also trying to think about the summer exams which I really don't want to think about right now I know um, it seems so yeah. far distance isn't it especially as we're still in lockdown I feel like every day is the same day and yeah. then actually it's not <laughs> yeah I'm finding it a struggle to motivate myself um mm -hmm. even on like uh, I get Fridays to study every week which is really lovely yeah. um I just find it so difficult that you know I've done all this work my competencies um but I'm really bad with like putting off the, the little tiny changes I need to make <laughs> And I'm like, oh, if I just submit this, like it's done, like I forget about it. Um, so I need to get better at that. But. <laughs> yeah, I'm the same. Like I started quite a few competencies, and to be fair, some of them I actually can't complete because they're like the mm. professional practice ones, and you need like lots of evidence. But there are definitely some that like I start and then just get a bit bored of and move on to another one that's just kind of lurking half finished. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just sitting there like. <laughs> Competencies do you have to do because you're genetics, right? Mm -hmm. um, um, so, what kind of, yeah, what do you have to do? So, we did our genetics rotation and finished that before Christmas. So, we did, I think there were two or three on like general lab etiquette, I guess, and like health and safety and quality control and stuff like that. Maybe just two. And then we have to do ones on like the sample pathway. So thinking about what happens to the sample and the different routes it could go down depending on like what test it needs. And then also like triaging and reporting. So when the sample comes in, the duty sign test will like assign priority and the downstream tests that need to happen. And for some samples, like they might happen one after the other but other ones they might all happen at once because they're really urgent yeah so we did a bit on that and then some of the analysis so like cytogenetic analysis and then molecular and did some on the like different tests that we do but we weren't able to do the tests because we're oh. not like essential members of the lab <laughs> oh that's such a shame that sounds so good though I've not actually kind of asked anyone who's doing you know a lab-based specialist and kind of what 
Mm. competence if you have to stick off so yeah that's really interesting <laughs> it is interesting I'm looking forward to um so we do we started our rotation in bioinformatics this week which I'll get back to you on whether I'm actually yep. <laughs> <laughs> enjoy this one. um but then we do reproductive science and genetic counseling so I'm really looking forward to those two just because like that that'll be pretty much probably the like only patient contact we'll have so I'm really looking forward to like that side of things. Oh, that sounds really nice. I've looked into genetic counselling a little bit and mm. yeah, it seems absolutely amazing. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hope you enjoy it. I hope I really do. <laughs> <you. laughs> yeah, I'm sure it will be good. What about you? Are you looking forward to your rotation in respiratory? So um, you start that next week. Yeah, I start that on Monday. Um, I'm really nervous because... Um, <laughs> you know I feel like I'm now very knowledgeable in that part you know that part of the body um yeah. that I've not really looked much at you know the lungs the heart and everything so when I had to choose one I was like yeah I'll go for the lungs I'll give the lungs a go um but I've been told uh, the unit here is really lovely and most of them are previous SDP students so hopefully they'll be really supportive and yeah. I'm there for I think four weeks um okay. and yeah, so I'm just going to give it a go. <laughs> I hope I don't make a complete fall out of myself. Um, <laughs> I'm sure you won't. <laughs> You're in just, training yeah. as well. Like, we're here to learn. They aren't yeah, expecting true. you to know anything, surely. <laughs> true. I think I'm quite, I think I'm just nervous because quite a lot of people have already done one of their rotations already. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you saying you did, um, you know, your genetics one before Christmas and everything like that. I think if I'd have done it when I came in and then could have just spent the time in Eurodynamics and GI, um I wouldn't have been as nervous maybe um but it's quite nice getting to you know I've had you know five six months getting to know um my department um yeah, yeah. fingers yeah. crossed they'll be just as lovely <laughs> I'm <laughs> sure they will be I'm sure I'm worrying over nothing yeah <laughs> if it makes you feel better I am terrified for the genetic counseling like rotation in particular just because it sounds very intense <laughs> but yeah they do it every year so it must be fine (laughs) yeah I think yeah you'll be fine I think I'm trying not to overthink it too much (laughs) I'm sure you'll be fine (laughs) that's best way to look at it (laughs) fab so I know the application has changed from like when we did it so it's changed to like a reflective piece but if you could like go back in time and give yourself like one bit of advice (laughs) what do you think it would be um, I applied for two very different specialisms. I applied for cancer genetics, cancer genomics, can't remember which yeah. one, sorry, uh, and urodynamics. Um, and I wish I'd just applied for urodynamics. Um, I, you know, looking back, it's very easy to say that. Um, but splitting, and like this year, you know, you're only allowed to choose one specialism anyway. Um, it's just, you know, giving it all for that one specialism. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you know this year you might actually see a lot higher quality because people are only picking one especially Mm -hmm. like me I picked two polar opposites one completely patient-based one (laughs) you know completely lab Um, it must have been so hard to write that application yeah (laughs) it was very interesting Uh, (laughs) I I remember looking back at my answers when they released um, the scores because I was just curious to see how I did for both Um, and I read back my answers and I was like, I don't know how I got on those. <laughs> I really, I really don't. Um, but, and I think um, if I'm giving advice, like don't be afraid to big yourself up. Because mm. I feel like I could have mentioned like a lot more experience I had um, that I didn't mention. Yeah. Um, and luckily, you know, that didn't matter for me because I managed to get in. But don't be afraid. <laughs> Chuck yeah. everything in there that you've done. Um and yeah try to be positive <laughs> yeah definitely even if you don't get on I think in a way it's a positive because like I know I wouldn't have been ready for it the first time I applied um so in a way it was quite good <laughs> yeah I think you learn a lot from the application as well um, yeah. and I was quite I was very lucky it was the only thing I applied for after uni I was quite happy in the situation to get some get to spend time with my family um yeah. obviously it was the peak lockdown when we were applying really mm-hmm. 
so I'm yeah I'm incredibly thankful that I, you know I've got a job yeah. <laughs> very grateful <laughs> yeah. sounds like a job that is really fun and interesting as well so well done <laughs> thank you <laughs> cool so yeah thank you so much for doing this and have a nice rest of your evening thank you so much dinner time now (laughs) yeah looking forward to getting some tea (laughs) (laughs) bye bye